Well, I haven't seen one like this in a while and I thought it was worth sharing with everybody. This is a Briggs & Stratton pressure washer. And one of the most important things when you go to work on a machine is the problem statement from the customer. What, what are they complaining about? What's the issue? There's a lot of details in there that can be extremely helpful. Some customers are very analytical and um, they may have noticed things develop over a long period of time. And so you shouldn't discount the customer statement, but this is a good example of where the customer statement can be fairly misleading, not on their account, but just um, on the sequence of events. So this customer brought this to me stating that there was an oil leak and there was oil all over the place here. And the first thing I was gonna do is start at the machine and pressure wash the pressure washer so I could look for an oil leak. Well, um, first thing I noticed was that somebody had been in here before. This thing was loose. Uh, this is not OEM, and I just so happened to notice that this was also loose, um, which gave me, I eh, just, I was a little curious, this thing was also loose. So anyhow, uh, I started it, and it started up for two seconds, but it was smoking like crazy. I threw the choke off, and it died, and I did that a couple more times, and noticed that the amount of smoke coming out was very excessive. Then I noticed at the bottom of the air filter uh, cover, there was some oil. And then I realized that the air filter was probably also totally soaked. At that moment, I checked via the dipstick the oil level, and it was about two inches higher than the two little indicator marks that it's supposed to be to. So on this one, you have these two little holes. Sorry, focus. You have these two little holes. And it was basically up here where the thing uh, begins to bend. So way overfilled. And so one of the locations of oil coming out was actually this little O-ring right here. Uh, we are not really supposed to have a bunch of oil in that tube. Not to mention it's loose for reasons I don't know yet. And uh, also this has been broken off. So maybe there was some impact damage here. The other source of the leak was the air filter. And if you're wondering why air filters get oily, there, there's basically two reasons. First of all, uh, going to the air filter housing, you have this little tube, and on an um, engine, you have the same thing inside your car. We call it the PCV system, positive crankcase ventilation. And basically what you have to imagine is that when the gasoline in the air expands on the power stroke and shoves the piston down, a little bit of um, basically gasoline and air sneak past the compression and the oil rings, and they get underneath the piston, and they build up in what we call the crankcase, which is basically the air above where the oil sits when you check your you know when you fill your oil into your engine and so we want to get rid of those gases we don't want them building up because they act against the underside of the piston where we actually want there to be low pressure and we want to burn them and so we reroute those back into the air filter and we kind of burn them again basically well lawnmowers have the same setup that's what this little tube is right here it's not as sophisticated as in a car but you still have it and you'd still call it a pcv system some people call it an oil breather um, but regardless of what you call it that's what it does well when you have an engine which is overfilled with oil it's actually more dangerous than an engine that is underfilled with oil at least that's what all of the experts i've ever spoken to in the industry say and the reason it is is because especially on a normal car like that Especially the reason is because as the crankshaft rotates around, if the crankshaft counterweights dip into the oil because the oil level is too high, it'll begin to froth up the oil like a cappuccino. And uh, what that does is it's kind of like this cycle. Once you get it frothing, the whole thing gets frothing and it raises, raises, raises the oil level and froths and it begins to um, send frothy oil everywhere. Frothy oil doesn't lubricate the same way as non-frothy oil or aerated oil. The other thing you can do is it can start to push this lighter weight frothy oil through passageways that it shouldn't go like the PCV breather. And that's how you get oil all over there. Then once this thing's soaked in oil, it becomes a restriction and the engine begins to start running almost as if it was choked where it begins to run too rich. So you have all kinds of problems. Eventually you get the spark plug coated in oil and then it won't even start because it won't fire. And um, that wasn't quite to the point in this case, but I was starting to get a little bit of oil in the crankcase. So the solution in this case is to drain, tip the machine, drain the oil back down to the appropriate level, clean out the air, well, change the air filter in this case, it's ruined and clean out the surrounding components. Now, I also had a situation once I did all that, um, it still would only run choked. And if a machine only runs choked, that means that it needs more fuel 
and that means that there's generally a fuel supply problem somewhere. So I disassembled and rebuilt the carburetor. It was varnished inside, and that's likely because the customer stopped using it, um, either for the season or because they were afraid of the oil leak causing problems. And so even though the customer's right that um, my oil is, like there's an oil leak, there's really a lot more going on to it than just that. It's really someone overfilled the oil and that led to smoking and that led to the air filter getting uh, basically almost blocked up, which led to a rich condition, which led to a spark plug being fouled out, which led to it not running right, which led to it sitting around, which led to the fuel going bad, which led to varnish in the carburetor. And so there's this whole sequence of events that uh, a more experienced mechanic can recognize, but a young mechanic or a new mechanic, or in my case, sometimes just a plain old forgetful mechanic, it can really burn you. And so um, pay attention to what the customer says. It's valuable information and that's your starting point, but also keep your eyes and ears open because there'll be a lot more happening possibly than what the customers noticed based on how analytical they are, how technical they are. And in some cases, I've had customers just lie to me because they've done something like they've tried to repair a machine themselves or they tried to do a service themselves and then they had a problem and they're embarrassed. And uh, embarrassment is no justification for lying, but you can understand how they want to avoid their embarrassment if they can. So. All right, I hope that was interesting for someone and helpful if you got something like this. But yeah, if you get smoking and uh, oil coming out of the air filter, look for an overfilled engine. And I hope that helps you. Take care, folks.